Good morning. How's it going there, folks? Good afternoon to some out there. It is the Earth Master on this end with uh, a Saturday update here, March 16th, 2024. Just before noon here along the West Coast in California. Latest activity looks like a 4.2 earthquake uh, and also some movement out on the Big Island with a 1.7, 4.2 over here across the Indonesia Islands area. We did see some activity stirring up out here this morning. On the far eastern side of the sun, a, a M3.5 solar flare coming in from a new sunspot. I don't think this is off of old sunspot 3590. That's positioned just a little bit further up north here off on the eastern limb. You can see in the recent UV ray here, here's another active region just south here of 3590. That's our old sunspot region that was the source of a couple X flares here weeks ago and including one of the well the largest flare so far the solar cycle with the x 6.3 that was from 3590 it is coming back around the bin we're getting around getting a, a look at it a little bit as far as the magnetogram image here just starting to see some of it out here of course in the days ahead we'll get a much better uh, perspective of what's going on with that sunspot but uh, we do have a couple active regions here Definitely to watch, including this one that did produce that uh, M flare today. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of magnetic arches there going on within that sunspot. Again, unnamed, but uh, it's definitely out there shooting some uh, decent flares off. Here is the far side look of the sun. Uh, I guess we can go back to this image here. Uh, this was last night, but still, it gives you a uh, perspective here of 3590, which is coming around the eastern limb I just mentioned about. The source of the M flare activity today uh, is right here. Now, it's possible that was much stronger than the M6. Point, uh, what was it that popped off there? M6. Point, uh, M3.5, excuse me. Uh, due to the uh, location out here, it's possible that uh, that could have been a much stronger flare, but. With it being obscured here, uh, you know, not directly facing the Earth, it's possible we could have seen uh, that may have been a little bit larger event. Either way, it did show up pretty nicely here on the flare detection chart. It produced uh, a little bit of radio blackouts out here across the sunlit side of the Earth. We're still getting the effects of the protons, it looks like, up at the higher level uh, regions and the solar or the uh, southern regions here, polar regions. So uh, definitely uh, elevated out here today in, in terms of proton events going on. Looking at 99% certainty with that. 75% for C-flare, M-flare at 5, X-flare at 1%. I'm sure these will change accordingly as these two active regions make their presence known uh, here in the days ahead. Right now, far as the visible disk goes, uh, at least on the Earth-facing side, there's a little region right here shown a little bit of complexity but overall that's not even really anything to write home about it's it's, it's going to be these two active regions out here on the eastern limb that should amplify the space weather activity here in the days ahead pretty cool all right uh as far as the auroras go right now not a whole lot there in the forecast hopefully we can get that to change in the uh weeks ahead all right earthquake activity see what we got here for the latest movement across the map Anything major going on overnight as far as the largest magnitude here? Uh, looks like that, uh, at least on the 24-hour map, is going to be that 5.5 south of New Zealand around the Macquarie Island area. Still waiting for some further adjustment there across New Zealand. Uh, it doesn't look like we've seen anything new. All these earthquakes there from yesterday. Notice the red rings here indicating older movement. And in fact, there's a lot of older activity here on the globe. Really haven't seen any major movement uh, right now. Uh, 4.2, like I mentioned there, coming into the uh, Indonesia Islands area. Uh, aside from that, uh, just kind of quiet conditions. Deeper activity, though, across the southern edge here of the Izu Trench. Notice that 4.4. Been a while since we've seen earthquake activity out here. In fact, I think the last one, oh, it's, it's been well over a week. Let me see what the last one was out here. Looks like maybe back, uh, yeah, over a week or so ago. And that's down there across the Mariana Island. So definitely some older quake activity, uh, a big window of no quake activity. And now we're getting some further movement out here today with a 
Uh, around the Mariana Islands region, it's kind of north of there, but it's deep, 230 kilometers for that 4.4. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, looks like um, Middle America Trench over here definitely showing some elevated activity here today and over the last couple days. Uh, the latest one, a 4.5. Uh, in this area, just off the coast there of Costa Rica. Now, they've been having a pretty decent swarm, decent amount of earthquake activity up here recently with some big-time clustering going on. Uh, very normal, though. It's a major subduction zone, uh, but uh, haven't really seen any big quakes, just a, a bunch of small and moderate quakes out here. But we'll continue to watch that, uh, potentially for some further movement. South America area, a handful of threes. And two's out there in the last 24. Uh, let's check out the California area. See what's going on down up north here. Looks like off the coast here of Tijuana, they did see a three-pointer. Handful of smaller quakes out here today. It doesn't look like anything major going on as far as any major swarms go. Just a, a little bit of microquake activity out there. 2.5 map and above. Removes the majority of the earthquakes, except for that one off the coast of Tijuana. And one up here in Northern California. 2.7 coming in there, about 22 kilometers deep. Uh, some small microquake activity here across the creeping segment. Uh, and then off on the uh, uh, Quinch Sab Save Vault. Hopefully that's correct. I'm, it's a little fracture here off of the main plate boundary, uh, just east of the Calaveras Fault Zone. That's seen a little bit of activity out here today near the Hollister region. A two-pointer, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. A little bit of shaking going on out there. One earthquake on the dreaded uh, Hayward Fault. I say that because it's a major fault zone that uh, runs through the Bay Area. In uh, terms of potential damage, it does have the ability to uh, produce some large earthquakes. And it's been a little while. The Hayward Fault uh, definitely is up there in terms of the percentage of the possibilities of future large earthquakes. But for now, just a, a 2.4. That was from yesterday, so nothing overnight. Up into the Pacific Northwest, not a whole lot either. Yellowstone National Park, not seeing anything, but let's just double check here. It is a weekend, so most of the time, uh, if anything does pop off, it's, it needs to be above a 2.5 level. Otherwise, it will get reviewed come Monday morning or unless a uh, geologist there jumps on board and decides to... Um, you know, check some of the uh, data. There's a handful of earthquakes out here, though, as you can see in the red lines. Nothing big. Those are probably, uh, well, they just barely showed up here across some of these other seismograph stations. So those are probably in the 1.0 magnitude range. Aside from that, not a whole lot, as you can see here across the uh, area. Oklahoma, outside the OKC area, around Edmond, getting a handful of smaller quakes out here. Out in the uh, gas and oil fields. Oklahoma is a little bit more vegetated out here, so it's kind of hard to see some of these oil operations. But, uh, you know, there's definitely been a lot of new development out here. These look like new housing developments. Uh, the thing is, you know, it's possible, uh, you know, they're building all these things on the older oil fields that were out here. Uh, but that doesn't matter. There's still going to be earthquake activity out here. Sometimes it takes months. Sometimes it takes years for these uh, oil fields to see earthquake activity. Uh, sometimes it can almost be immediately. But uh, it all depends. Either way, it is uh, mentioned out here on the map that there are oil fields out there. And that's where we're seeing the earthquake activity here outside the OKC area. Nothing going on across the New Madrid Seismic Zone or the eastern portion of the country, aside from one little quake way up north near the Smithfield, Maine area. I would love to visit Maine. A beautiful area. Um, it's just, I, I don't know, it's, I, I would love to experience uh, uh, what it's like up there in Maine. Absolutely beautiful. I've just seen the pictures and videos and whatnot, but uh, one of these days I'll get up there. All right, uh, big island of Hawaii, nothing major going on. A couple smaller quakes here in the last 24 hours. No major movement there across the Kilauea volcano. Uh, Alaska area, as you can see, uh, getting a little activity on the subduction zone of 4.0. Earlier this morning near the King Cove area and a couple other earthquakes here within the vicinity of that quake. 
No major quake activity, but, uh, you know, kind of feel like we're just getting started out here today. As far as Iceland goes, let's go see what's going on here across Iceland. Looks uh, quite elevated out here today. In fact, uh, a lot more so than the uh, past couple days. Uh, seeing a lot of activity here across Grindvik. That's not a good sign. And some further activity east here of the uh, store of Store of Stagafell and the Slingorfell region over here across this area. Of course, most of our eruptive activity events have has been roughly about here. We did see some back in January that got extremely close here to the Grindavik area. It did, uh, there was a little fracture zone that popped up right here and it did pour some lava into a couple homes here. But uh, we're seeing that elevated earthquake activity out here today. And it is, you know, underneath this area as well. If you look at some of the depth of these earthquakes there, about two kilometers or so, three kilometers. Um, oops, go back here a little bit. 2.6, 3.1. Uh, most of those earthquakes there are relatively at the same level, some deeper. So there's definitely something, I think there's something bigger going on here as uh, far as um, these rift boundaries go really not seeing a whole lot of shallow earthquake activity that would indicate uh, some subsurface magma, you know, just below the surface here. These are relatively deeper quakes, so something is going on out here across the Iceland area and specifically around the, uh, the uh, Reckoness Peninsula, so keep an eye on that. As far as GPS stations go, look over here to the uh, Grindavik station and... Um, Let's look here, see what we got. A little, little data blackout right here, but if you look, I'll zoom that in just a tad bit. Past couple runs here, including today's date, does show elevated activity. And uh, that's, you know, it's continuing. There was a little drop off here. Some magma got displaced somewhere. There was a dike intrusion, uh, but the question is, where did that magma go? Now we're going back up here in terms of inflation across the area. And, uh, you know, with all these deeper quakes going on here, Definitely leads me to believe that something uh, maybe on, on a bigger side, a bigger scale of things, uh, is about ready to take place out here. I don't think we're done with that. I see some folks saying that uh, the eruption has ended and there's no more cause for concern, but we can't, uh, you know, you have to look at the data and the GPS, uh, inflation and whatnot, and see that this is not over at all. Just because we've gone past the 30-day intervals of eruptions here, it uh, doesn't mean that it's over. Looking at, well, this update was, was put out yesterday here from the Icenic Med Office. They're still thinking that there's an increased likelihood of an eruption. But I've been seeing a couple of geologists here on the, the YouTube channel stating that this is over and uh, that they'll it'll probably eventually go away. But I, I don't see that. I think there's something bigger going on there below the surface that we need to watch out for. All right, uh, what else is there? Anything major going on out here across this area of the country or the world? Looks like a 2.8 coming in to the Mediterranean region. It looks like around Greece or so. Smaller earthquake activity uh, in that region today. Handful of earthquakes out there as well across the plate boundary. Uh, in between Spain and the Morocco area. Looks like a 4.5 coming in there from yesterday. Aside from that, the Atlantic Ocean looks pretty quiet, folks. Not a whole lot going on here in terms of uh, any major activity. We'll just continue to watch it. There was an earthquake off the uh, Northern California coastline. See that earthquake way over there? Let's bring it up. Off on the Blanco Fracture Zone, a little 3.3. So, uh, yeah, nothing big, but uh, we'll continue to watch that. We didn't check trimmer last night. Let me see what we got here for the trimmer. Seven, oh, wow, <laughs> seven epicenters of trimmer up here across the Cascadia subduction zone. So that, uh, you know, we're back into the uh, very quiet conditions compared to years past as we've seen almost a, a regular occurrence of uh, large trimmer events. It's just been a couple... It's been since about 2022, October, that we've seen the last major event. Since then, we've only seen a handful of uh, 
a moderate tremor events and it's getting weaker and weaker. The question is, uh, does that mean that everything's just so compact here that it's ready to pop in terms of the Cascadia? I don't know. I mean, I don't have the magic ball. I think it's data that we need to look at and, uh, any changes in, you know, outside of the normal conditions are definitely something to watch. So we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to watch it. I hope you guys are out there. Um, well, if you're out here on the West Coast, it's an absolutely beautiful day. Um, I got 68 degrees right now. We're supposed to be about 75 degrees here where I'm at, outside of Chico. Warmer tomorrow, close to 80. I am going to be outside most of the day. Uh, I got a little bit of school work I got to do. Uh, but after that, um, I'm definitely going to be outside. I may rototail the uh, garden a little bit more, get uh, get that ready for some planting. And uh, it's just a, a beautiful day to be outside here across California. Uh, we do have some severe weather potential out there across Texas today. A slight risk category being involved there across San Antonio, and it covers Austin as well. There is a 2% chance for tornado probability within these points, or within this uh, green area. So just a heads up. Main threat, it's going to be some large damaging hail out here across the 15 hatched area. This little dashed area there indicating the significant severe potential out there across San Antonio, Laredo, Eagle Pass, Uvalde, Pleasanton, Texas area. Heads up. Of course, those guys are used to it. Every time I visit Texas out here, everyone's got an outside carport. Uh, one of those uh, uh, kind of like a mobile one that you can move around. Anything will work, you know, to help protect your vehicle from large damaging hail. Baseballs, fl you know, flying out of the sky are not good. All right, uh, what else do we have here? Numerical models. We'll put this into motion. Going to be some, you know, there's that severe potential in rain. Thunderstorms down here across the south. Uh, once we put that into motion here, I'm kind of keeping an eye on the west coast. We do have some storm systems coming in. Looks like around uh, next weekend or so, a trail of storms, it looks like. And, uh, you know, it's each day here, each run that I check, we're getting closer to the April 8th time frame. And uh, if you ask what April 8th is, that's going to be the total eclipse. I'm keeping an eye out here across the area. Of course, you know, springtime, you get a lot of thunderstorms, a lot of low-level moisture, and it blocks out a lot of the sun. Um, so that would not be cool for a major eclipse to happen on that date. And we, we got nothing but cloud cover out here. It'd still be kind of cool. I'm still going out here regardless. I'll be out in Texas for that event. Uh, but I would prefer to have it clear skies. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. I'll definitely be checking that more uh, aggressively in terms of cloud cover potential on the total eclipse date. All right, for now, uh, I'm going to get some schoolwork done, and I'm outside to play. Literally, I'm going to be outside to play here. Going to have a fun day and enjoy this uh, warmer weather. Have a good one, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here uh, sometime this afternoon. I'll pop back in on the live stream. Of course, if anything else happens out here, we'll do an update. Take care, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here later.